Hello cats and kittens, I am Raina the Wish of What the I am coming to you live, not really, from the hotel room right outside of Madison, Wisconsin. I am traveling for work and uh, I don't have any of my usual accoutrements, so excuse the shit lighting. Also, excuse how unvarnished I am. Wine. Cheers. So the premise of today's video and the purpose is really just showing you that you can do different colored style activators. I am using Golden's Heavy Body Teal. This is working out the kinks because sometimes when you use a brand new paint, a brand new style activator and you're not quite used to it, it takes some time to get the consistency to something that you can work with. I'll tell you about the colors I'm using. Uh, first of all, I forgot to film the very first part of this. Oh God, I hope the AC is not too loud. Don't you hate those automatic ACs in hotels and they just go off any billy nilly which way they damn choose? Air conditioners aside. Air conditioners, I'm literally going nuts. It's a heater, it is March and it's Wisconsin. I forgot to film the part where I put the pillow paint on. For these three that I'm showing you in this video today, I'm using Sherwin-Williams Color to Go in white, as if you couldn't tell. The very deepest, darkest color is, it's an amalgamation. It's a Frankenstein, as I like to call them, when I mix a couple of different colors together to get one. So it's mainly dioxazine purple by Liquitex Artist Basics. So after that, uh, I used Ultramarine, and then I layered that with Sapphire by this little pigment. I followed that up with Mermaid, also by this little pigment, and then finished it with Pebeo Iridescent Green Yellow or Yellow Green, I'm not sure which, it's their iridescent color that is green. Who really cares about the name? It's all semantics anyway. That is not necessarily opaque. I don't know how to classify the iridescents and the, the metallics and the ones with mica in them, but it can support a cell activator and create the peacock cells that we're all going for. So I use it, I like it. I could tell while I was blowing it that it was just too thick because the paint wasn't moving the way I wanted it to and I was blowing through to the pillow good indication. I'm not one to ever give up on anything, so I tried to spin it out. No avail. It's just kind of a meh. It's a meh. We're trying it again this time. I am mixing things up a little bit. I have remixed my cell activator so it is thinner, and I tested on a piece of paper. I did that, of course, off camera because nobody wants to see me blowing a piece of paper. <sighs> the things that come out of my mouth. That's why you watch me, isn't it? You just, you wanna know what I'm gonna say. All right, so Sherwin-Williams. This stuff is highly recommended by many people in the paint pouring community, most notably Lisa Marvin. Uh, I don't like it. Sorry, Lisa. It's just not, I don't like it. It's, mm. So I kind of gave up after these tiles using that and went back to my color place, which for me just works a thousand times better and who knows why. Who knows? I don't know. We all have our own proclivities and weirdnesses. And for me, uh, Sherwin-Williams just doesn't cut it. So it doesn't cut the cheese. Not that you really want anybody to cut the cheese. Oh, cool. The heater went off. Good deal. I hope you can hear me better now. All right. So uh, same layer of colors almost. Mixing it up a little bit. I'm using the opaque on the bottom. Uh, that opaque dioxazine purple mixture. Followed by sapphire by this little pigment. This purple color, I'm adding this Constellation by this little pigment, which is a brand new color and probably my favorite so far because I love, love, love a good blue purple. Then I'm adding the Ultramarine on top of that. My table's uneven. It's okay, you live and you learn, right? And I'm torching it from a distance. Because if you torch it up close, you scorch your paint. You can watch this video if you want to see what happens with scorched paint. Yeah, not cool. I always have a toothpick handy. Couldn't find my toothpicks the other day, so I used a screw because somehow I had a very sharp screw handy, but no toothpicks. Don't ask. But okay, here's the cell activator, which again is golden, heavy body, and teal. Mixed with Australian Floetrol, I started with a four to one ratio. It's too thick. <laughs> We thin our cell activator, of course, with one milliliter at a time of Australian Floetrol. And if you're close, be even more conservative than that. I keep mine in like a ketchup bottle, like a condiment bottle, and just add tiny drops until I get to the right consistency. And if you're stirring and you get lacing on the side of your cup or your container, you know that it's in the realm of probably good. 
And I am blowing that bitch right out. I think I got really lightheaded after this one. No, no, it's the next one. I got so lightheaded, I had to sit down for a minute. I'm out of wine. All right. I'm a high class response girl. I travel in style, so I've got a box of wine on top of the hotel refrigerator. I know how to party. Oh, oh shit. I'm so good at doing Sucks. stuff like that. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, major accident. That's okay. Nothing that got ruined was actually any good anyway. <laughs> it really wasn't. It wasn't good at all. It was a couple of tests that I did for a, another piece I'm working on, a commission piece, and I could not get the colors to gel at all. So the things that got completely wiped out <clears throat> didn't matter anyway. They were garbage. So. Okay. I spin this a lot. This one is really turning out well, I think. I had to tilt for my life, but I was pretty pleased with the outcome. I might zoom in on that part. It's like a, it's like a kaleidoscope. I could hypnotize you. How would I hypnotize you? What would I do? What mischievous, awful thing would I do if I hypnotized you? Hmm. I don't know. I may have to think about that. If you could hypnotize anybody, what would you have them do? Answer below in the comments. I'm kind of curious to see how sick and twisted and demented you all are. I am punchy, I'm sorry. No, I'm really not. This is this is me. This is how I normally am. And I am the messiest person indeed. That is true. That is a true statement. I should show you a picture of my art room sometime, but I think you might run screaming. But I must say, this is one of the cooler blooms I've done in a long time. I thought I lost my mojo for a while because my life got in the way. I didn't paint for a bit of time. And when I started painting again uh, after two, three months, they were not turning out. So that was encouraging. I was like, ooh, maybe I still got it. For this third one, I am doing the exact same colors, same um, bottom to top. Oh, same. <laughs> Order, I'm trying to say order. But I had in mind doing kind of like a Dutch pour. Um, I'm really lousy at actual Dutch pours with hair dryers. <laughs> I'm okay with the little mini leaf blower thing, but like a real hair dryer. I I've found paint on my back before. Like, how do you do that? How do you paint on your back? But Jeez, I am having a night. Yeah, I did drop things a lot. So I started again with the Frankenstein, di Frankenstein dioxazine, purple, <laughs> followed by sapphire, uh, which is that. Sapphire is such a cool color. It's this incredibly shimmery, deep, 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 dark blue. It's very mysterious. I feel like if the Kraken were to rise up from Relay and choose a paint color, it would be sapphire. My brain is weird, sorry. Not sorry. There's the constellation again. That color is just so rad. I'm gonna do so, so much with that color. It's, and it looks so good with teal, with the mermaid, and with, ooh, sea glass, which is gonna be in video part two. There's my ultramarine again. Ooh, oh, I did change it up. I added glisten this time. Glisten is an interference pigment also by this little pigment. And um, it's kind of like a blue-green shift. And it's very pretty, especially on black. It looks okay on white, but the real magic is when you put on a dark background. And next, for my next trick, I am using way, way, way too much cell activator. Like, way too much. <laughs> That's okay. I thought the end result was pretty spiffy. Entrancing, isn't it? I know I'm entranced. Actually, I'm just exhausted. Like, Madison is such a cool city, and I like it so, so much. Uh, especially walking down State Street. If you've ever been here, it is, it is rad. It is... The city has got such a cool life and energy about it, but during COVID, everything's locked down and there are still buildings boarded up. So instead of doing anything cool, here I am <laughs> hanging in my hotel room. I did uh, run an errand and got some dim sum for dinner and I might puke. It is, I don't think that was very fresh. And there was some crunchy stuff where there should not have been crunch. So I'm just kind of like on the edge of like, am I gonna puke or am I not? I don't quite know yet. Um, so if I run, 
Uh, it's not because I need more wine yet. Whoa, that's going fast. Yeah, if I run and then you hear some very terrible noise in the background, you know what happened. Bad dim sum. It happens to everybody, doesn't it? All right, so here I am blowing the hell out of this thing. She's gone from suck to blow. Random Spaceballs reference. Bonus points if you are a Spaceballs fan. It is one of the best movies ever made. Says the Mel Brooks addict. I, you know, also love Monty Python. So, you know, Mel Brooks, Monty Python, who can never go wrong? There you can look at my scalp. You'll notice I don't have any dandruff. That's a nice thing. I've always felt particularly blessed that I've never had dandruff. I'm starting to get a few gray hair, gray hairs, gray hairs here and there. But um, you know, all in all, I have a pretty healthy scalp. Just thought I'd point that out since you're spending a bunch of time looking straight at it. I've been having an issue lately with these square tiles. So I'm not actively making coaster sets, but I practice all of my the pieces I'm thinking of on these four inch tiles first because they're so cheap and they're easy and they're convenient. And if I screw up really bad, all I need to do is soak them in water and then peel it off, you know, after it's dried. Uh, after, soak it in water after the paint is dried. Don't soak it in water when the paint is wet. It's just messy, gross. Anyway, when they're done, they look so good, but I never take the time to file those like tongues off the edge and I ought to like I have a filing stone I don't really know what to call it but when I'm like rapid firing you know painting six eight four inch tiles in a really short time period the last thing I want to do is stop and mm, file off the edges so I've been thinking about ways to disguise them I'm thinking of um making frames and whatnot out of like polymer clay I thought about doing some things with resin I thought about I thought about a lot of things so if you know how to solve that particular problem I'd love to see what you do. It's, they're just kind of ugly, those bumps. I don't know. Do they bother you? They bother me. The straw I'm using is actually just a pen that the ink dried up so I took it apart and used the shaft. Very helpful. So I haven't completely finished getting the kinks out of the cell activator but all in all I'm pretty pleased with it. You know it's almost there. In video part two of uh, perfecting I will show you even better results than these. And it just came from mixing my cell activator, you know, dollop, just a tiny bit of flow troll, thinning it, getting it too thin, adding a tiny bit of paint and balancing it, testing it between each, you know, mixture and, and finding like the exact perfect ratio. Testing is a big thing, you know, don't be afraid to get a piece of like cardboard or something that you can just throw away. and tiny bit of pillow paint, tiny bit of an opaque paint and your cell activator and just test it. It'll save you a lot of frustration if you just take the time to test it before you blow it by blowing it. Okay. Oh, thank God this is over. Okay. If you've stuck around, thank you. Follow me on Instagram at which of WTF or at painted Raina if you only want to see my art and don't give a shit about the rest of my life. That's cool too, not gonna judge. Visit my website, I've got it linked below and like and subscribe because that gets my saucy ass making more videos for you, which hopefully make you laugh and possibly teach you something though. <laughs> Jury's out on that one. Here are the finished beauties side by side. Later. <laughs>